switching the pivot. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no that's a good, that's a good question actually. Um, yeah. So it, it is, it, it is probably a good practice to, you know, once I discovered this, um, you know, Dan gave me some advice. If you look on his blog as well, uh, to he, he basically changes the pivot from here to the middle. So it does give him that freedom of moving. If you're looking at it from above, you're moving a toy around, right? So, uh, some people like having it animated from the, uh, from the back. Uh, however, one thing I just, dis I discovered recently, if I just open the anim bot, uh, I wish I discovered, uh, this when I was blocking this shot, cause this is probably the best thing I've ever seen. If it, I, if it loads, come on, here we go. So using Animbot, um, I can now change the pivot on the fly. So if I select my route and I just want to, let's say I want to pivot from the feet and then I want to have him kind of, you know, rear up and swing around. I can select my route and I can select the pivot. I can put it down here and then I can rotate it up like that. And then you select that again, and then, you know, there you go. All right, and then it, let's say I press it again, it remembers where that pivot is. And then I can rotate it again, I can rotate it around, uh, you know, super powerful. So it, now I'm discovering all these new tools, it makes me even more free when I'm animating. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not constrained to uh, like where the pivot is or you know what space the chest is in or, or the head is in. You know, I'm not freaking out as much anymore. Um, for me, the biggest game changer since I came across Dan's blog uh, a few years ago was to hide the legs. You know, not now because I'm blocking in stepped, but certainly when I do a layered approach, if you can't, if you haven't got an option to have a proxy rig like this, I would put the, the legs into body space and just tuck them away somewhere, you know, just put them under the chest or there is, there's another tool uh, where you can select the faces and you can hide the faces so you can set them to transparent. Uh, there are lots of ways of doing it, but for me, when I'm blocking stuff, whatever rig I'm using, where possible, I would have to have a proxy rig, uh, just purely because I can go and hide the legs. Now, again, I'm not, I haven't got it here, but in a later file, I'll start hiding them. And actually, I'm going to show you now. Um, has anyone got any questions on this? Because I think I'd, I, you know, I spend a lot of time blocking um, and whatnot, so. I didn't realize the time, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. um, can you just quickly go over that uh, change of pivot again? So you yeah. can toggle between... Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, it's this uh, This is on Animbot, so um, uh, you'd need to use Animbot for this. You can, you can cheat, and you can use locators, so let's say... Uh, I'll sh show you a quicker way, of, uh, not quicker, but I'll show you a manual way of doing it. But basically, if you've got Animbot, you select this uh, icon down here, and I think you can reset the pivot. So if you click on this little arrow, uh, temp pivot centered, uh, reset, reset temp pivot. Okay, so that there, that's my pivot by default. Now. When you first uh, hit this button, it gives you an option to rotate it or move it around, right? So I'm changing where the pivot is at the moment. Let's go to my camera view. Now it's only when I press W, E, or R for my move scale will rotate. It's only when I press that is when it actually allows me to rotate the character from that point or move the character. So right now, let's say I want to pivot from his nose. He's just run into a wall. <laughs> uh, if I press E for my dub, uh, for rotate, he can run into the wall and then whoosh, hit the wall like that. Um, and you know, I would use that as I would use my my root as the as the main driver. Whoosh, I'd pivot from there. 
I'd have a pose there. And then from there, that's when I would use all my, all my chest, my hips and stuff as the, uh, as a, as a sculpt uh, to sculpt the pose, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so that is awesome. I've, I've discovered that, um, I, I use that in a tools. A tools has got that as well, mm-hmm. but I think they've, uh, the guy is Alan Camillo. I think, I don't, I don't know if I said that right. Um, amazing guy, by the way, uh, for doing this. Um, I think he revamped it so that it, it's got better, um, better functionality on the uh, pivot changer. So really, really powerful. Um, but if you want to do it manually, if you don't have this uh, option to, you can create a locator yourself. Uh, so if I go create locator, uh, show... Uh, if I select my root, select the locator, and I'm just going to snap it again. This is why I'm saying like you, you need to get into a kind of mindset or, or, or rigging mindset or learn rigging at least um, to learn these hacks so you don't have to do this stuff manually, you know, because I've got a tool, a script that I found. Um, I find a lot of scripts <laughs> um, or I get people to write them for me. Yeah. Be friends with riggers. <laughs> um, so I've got a, a, a script that if I select my route, it creates a locator where that is. And that saves me hassle, you know, doing it manually. So if I, if I now select this locator, uh, that's there. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> don't know what this one is I'm gonna hide that so this is my locator I just created it's doing nothing at the moment so I'm gonna move it I want, I want my pivot to be about here right so I'm gonna constrain that locator to my root so I'm gonna select the root then my locator I'll go parent constraint uh, maintain offset actually I'll tell you what I do let's say we have it from the nose and then let's say he's just run into a wall and this is a good trick I learned from my HOD Chris Hutchison I learned it from him a few years ago uh, if you whatever selection whatever part of your timeline you've got selected you can do what you want you can constrain what you want and then you can just bait that section down. I think you have to do it on ones first that is the best practice. Delete the constraint outside of that timeline section is safe, but that time, that section of your timeline, you you've constrained it, you've baked it down, you deleted the constraint, you've baked it on ones and then you bake it again on like two, threes or fours or whatever. But that section you can then, you know, outside of that section is safe basically so let's constrain so with that actually when you're baking in the, the timeline you have to make sure the one box is checked that says keep and um, uh yeah yeah, yeah. so bake it yeah so yeah. yeah so you've got smart bake or bake on one so i would bake it on one so uh i'm just gonna just select everything very quickly i'm gonna show you guys I'm going to reset just before I move on because I know uh, I'm going to delete everything. And I'll just do a little test, right, just to show you guys what I mean. And I'm going to switch this back to uh, linear. And then I'm going to, let's say, (laughs) look at this guy here. (laughs) I'm going to delete these guys. All right, let's do a little test. So we've got a, a cub running along, Tom and Jerry style, and he runs into a wall. And then we want, hits the wall, compresses, and then goes up, right? So as soon as he hits the wall, that's there. Outside of that, I don't really want to touch. So I'm going to start from 29. And then, uh, uh, because I've got no other keys, it don't really matter. So from 29, I'm going to, I don't really want to try and counter and have this, you know, find this point where it, where it's uh, nose is. 
but using an bar, I could just quickly change that pivot, rotate it up, rotate it back down. And then, you know, and then I add in all my head shakes or whatever. Um, so let's do that manually. So I'm going to go back to 29. So he just ran into the wall and I want, I want to change the pivot from here to where his nose is. So let's go to your, your locator. I'm going to snap this to the nose or roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> uh, select the root, select the locator, and then we're going to go constrain parent and let's turn on maintain offset and then go add. So now a locator is there, right? Or by the nose. Now, if we bake that down, you can smart bake this. So bearing in mind, you'll have like, you know, a lot of keys for your blocking and whatever. So it's bake simulation. Now your first one you want to do is smart bake. You don't want that on ones because that's just your locator. So smart bake that. And then you're temporarily gonna constrain your root to your locator, right? So let's go to our locator, delete the constraint. So now your locator is doing what it needs to do. So now this locator here is gonna be the driver, right? just in that section. So now we're gonna reverse the process. So we we'll select the locator, select the um, root, and then we we'll go parent constraint, um, maintain offset, uh, still checked. So now your locator is driving the root, but you're, you still got keys on your root. Okay, so you don't wanna kill that. So that's important because <clears throat> we're going to bake it off in a minute. So just in this point here, we're going to start to key the uh, the locator so that it goes up. So it hits the wall. Boom. And now, just in that section, so I'm gonna to go to 54 and just make that section now. Now select my root, and then I'm gonna go edit. Bake simulation, now this time I want to bake it on one, so untick smart bake, bake it on ones, and that's gonna bake just that section, right? And then you'll notice your keys are green, obviously, because we constrained it with keys. Now you can, uh, there's two ways of uh, deleting a constraint. So you can either, or there's a few ways actually. So frame the control in your outliner and find this little uh, red icon, uh, this chain icon, and just simply delete it. Or you can select it here in your shapes. Okay, press um, control C paste it down here and then go delete control V that delete it or you can press down and then left and then that deletes it. So there's, you know, there's a few ways of deleting a constraint. Uh, so now what is going to happen, you're still going to get that key, you know, you're still going to get that animation, but before, before that happened, it hasn't affected it. Okay. And then you can, you know, you can just go in and clean up that section. You know, if we go, uh, I've got a hotkey as well to smooth all this out. So I think it's used for mocap. OA smooth, I think it is. Uh, so if I select a bunch of these keys, I could just press a, uh, M. I've set it for. Um, And this is why uh, my HOD, when he sees my scenes, he freaks out because I've got keys everywhere sometimes. But um, because I've got I've got this hotkey, when I've got crazy spikes in my curves, uh, I've just kind of got into the habit of not worrying about it um, because I can I can do this. 
so it's been a bit of a uh, blessing and a curse so i've i've since started to clean up my act <laughs> thanks to him so i don't work i don't work this way as much anymore um i still get to a point where i'm you know i, I think the final output is the most important thing but you know if you can get amazing animation and your scene's a mess you know the client isn't going to say oh can i see the scene you know they don't care um but there's a lot to be said for you know there's trying to find a balance as well you know uh so does that make sense oh because i've cleaned because i've messed around with all the curves obviously it's messed with that so so don't do that what i just did <laughs> um but yeah does that does that make sense yeah hope you guys enjoyed that yeah, that was great. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right. So I'm going to... Shared your Sweden script as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah.